This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. We are here again at the Cheese Store in Beverly Hills. It is a special moment for uh, our podcast. Our podcasts are actually merging. All right, we got Daddy versus Doctor Pete and Sebastian show. It's the first time Pete and and uh, the Doctor have been on a podcast together. Got a lot to get into. Actually, this is the Pete and Sebastian show as Doctor Cohen as our guest. So this is almost like like you know finding out your husband's been cheating and go. Well, at least let me meet the woman that's sharing my bed. Yeah, what what did you think when, when you heard he was doing another podcast with another guy? I found out that you reached out and said, maybe we should do a podcast together. That's aggressive. <laughs> that, that was aggressive. I figured you were like, I mean, he's a nobody. Anybody can do a podcast. Uh, what? No. No, listen, I really, I'm joking. I don't have an opinion about that. But it is good to meet you. It's I mean, nice to talk meet you. you. I've nice hung to, out with yes, you at the party. I know you. I find you funny. And I've told Sebastian we should all do this at some point because there's so many things. I don't really know a doctor that I'm comfortable with talking about certain sure. things with. Um, and like, you know, dude, don't hit me with the fucking uh, I'm a pediatrician, so I don't know what a rash on a 30 year old would be. But if it was the same way as on a ten year old, all of a right. sudden I know I what know. it is. He's yeah, exactly the same. It's way. a cop out. Guy. Do you, do you... It's a cop out. And I find. Do you find that a real uh, an adult doctor does an adult doctor look down a little bit on a pediatrician that the way the way a movie star looks down on a TV? A hundred percent. They they're wow. like you only see little people. <laughs> that really exists. But it's not like big people. It's just like bigger things. The way you look down on a vet. <laughs> <laughs> No, you know what? Vet medicine is probably the closest to pediatrics, what? right? Because patients can't tell you what's wrong. You sort of got to figure it out. P veterinarians and pediatricians are very, very similar. When you say they one can't say what's fur, wrong, like doesn't. you can't trust that a 10 year old is telling you exactly what's wrong. Yeah, well, but like babies don't tell you what's wrong. No, baby. Right? Yeah, so they come in, they're crying. You got to figure it but out. But, like, but a medicine. pediatrician is with a child till the child's 18. Right. So up until 18, right. I can tell you what it is. At 19, You're I'm in the class. You're exactly. I'm in the class. So, I mean, that's fucking ridiculous. Is that not? I mean. So, we were talking about this. <laughs> I didn't think that's before you came on. It's going to be a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I know the wine made it to the room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, you're your best. Thank oh. you, Lindsay. Are you, Are you on call, bro? No, it's because it's your podcast. It's just obviously they don't offer guests anything. Oh, no, oh thank you. All right. Awesome. Cheers. Cheers. Great to be hanging with you, Doc. Hey, nice to have you. Yeah. Here. Oh my God, that was an action. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh shit. So we were talking, and he brought up a good point. If an 18 year old had a rash or, or something going on with him, and a 39 year old had something going on similar, can you diagnose adults? I mean, there are some things I see in adults that are very similar that I'll be like, it seems like it's like that. But the serious things, here's the thing. As a doctor, what my main job is to differentiate like things you worry about from things you really don't need to worry about. I mean, that's all you're trained to walk in a room and be like, eh, don't worry about it, which is honestly 99% of things versus uh -huh. like, oh man, we got to get that checked out. Right. And right. I know that in the pediatric world and I don't know that as well in the adult world. No, if you were a doctor in like a, in Massachusetts, the shirt's unbuttoned too much, e even in July. The color but is it, too but much. It, but for a doctor in Beverly Hills, you could even do one more bottle. <laughs> <though>. <laughs> okay, so yeah, tell him about the story. So I, he I, texts me a picture of a rash and he even knows the preface. It. He goes, I know you don't know adults and this is my mother, but what do you think? So I looked at it, I was like, yeah, I, I had no idea. Because here's the thing, it probably is nothing, but I don't know enough to be able to like poo-poo it like I would in a kid. God forbid it's something serious. What if he did a, a shot, Sebastian gave you a shot of yeah. that rash, but it was so closed in that right. all you saw was the rash, and he said, this is on my daughter's leg. Right, but the thing now he... We, now we come no, back, I would we know, but, no, but here's the thing. 
that rash specifically is something I wouldn't see in kids. Oh, okay. So that's that's the difference. Yeah, if it's eczema, your eczema and a five-year-old eczema and on your elbows, I'm going to know what that is. So right, the common things I'm going to know, but then the the things that happen more when you're an adult, I'm not going to know as well. But you, you like you said, I see kids up until usually college, about 18. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they come back 19, 20, and then sometimes the 20-year-olds are saying things where I'm like, I don't even have those issues. Now you got to see an adult doctor. Okay. Now. You know how you said, uh, I'm just there to tell you what the things to worry about and the things yeah. not to worry about. So when it is something that someone should worry about, mm -hmm. right? One thing you probably do, right? You look in a child's mouth. Yeah. And if you look in a child's mouth, 99% of the time, it's fine. Right. Pretend you're looking in my mouth right now, right. and it's the one, one millionth of a time where I could be dead in a week. Uh -huh. And I see, and, I, and, and that's just my dad. He's, he brought me. Right. You look in my mouth, yeah, and I want you to walk us through, like I'm on death's door. I'm eight. <laughs> right, you're eight. What do you hit my dad with? <laughs> Can we see this? No. <laughs> I want to see that. <laughs> like, like I said, all right, sweetie, you can close your mouth now for the last time. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how do you? God, that's a, bro, that is a poker face. Yeah, I know, right? A poker face. I like that you. I don't, right? I'm trying to think, what what do you have in your head that would be in your mouth that would cause death, like within the week? I mean, literally, a cobra snake <laughs> looks out at you, <laughs> dancing <laughs> in the back of my fucking. I wonder why you picked the mouth. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you went from like Back strep to throat to so like. Talk about, what? <laughs> What's going on, everybody? It's Corielli from the Pete and Sebastian show. All right, college football fans, are you ready for week one? How psyched are we to get this college football started? DraftKings Sportsbook is hooking you up with the can't miss offer to start the season strong, baby. This week, new customers can bet just $5 on college football and score $200 in bonus bets instantly. Anything can happen in college football. We all know that. Your team could go from unranked to dynasty mode in just a couple of years. Change comes fast. The only thing that's a lock is the great office from DraftKings Sportsbook. Listen, guys, life's more fun when you're in on the action. We all know that. When you got a reason to be watching and download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now, that's all you got to do. Just download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the code THECAST. Look, guys, life's more fun when you're in on the action. We all know that. So right now you can download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the code THECAST. New customers can score $200 in bonus bets instantly when they bet just $5 on college football. That's $200 in bonus bets instantly when they bet just $5 on college football. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code THECAST. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.com. In New York, call 877-8-HOPENY. That's H-O-P-E-N-Y. Or text H-O-P-E-N-Y. That's the number 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, KS, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario, C dkng.co slash football for eligibility terms and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Well, then what are you looking for in there anyway? If, if you if you're like, there's nothing to see there's roads. Oh, you know, it's all a tonsil. It's all a dance, isn't it? Yeah, it's all charades, the, no, like, bro. Let's say you look in a kid's mouth and, right, they came in with fever, sore throat, their voices change. It sounds like a, you know, like a hot potato. They're they're having trouble swallowing, and you see the throat is almost like closed, and they could possibly have an abscess around the tonsils. Then we're saying things like, you know, this is a little more serious. This this is something we can't do with just going home with antibiotics. We want to do some more lab tests. We're gonna go to the emergency room. Would you look and go? Okay, Dad, yeah, this, yeah. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do. Can some we send more mom home to get a we're suitcase? Do some imaging. <laughs> we're gonna take yeah. Tim's hip on a little ride. We we, we <laughs> may need to stay at the hospital a couple oh, days, oh, but oh, it's oh, fixable. Oh, oh, oh. And everything's going to be okay. Jesus. It's all fixed. Oh, but, you know, it sucks. It's a it's hard job, it's bro, hard. to have to say those things. It's hard. And, and I have, uh, you know, this just happened actually with a personal friend last week. And I have to admit. I will have them wine. Don't bring us down right now. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a good story. But I have to admit, I, I don't know if I did a good job. I feel like I'm usually a good job giving bad news. They they it's This is a very good friend of mine who sees me, which will be hard when you have a personal relationship, right? Because... On top of it, you don't want to mess up. And he came in because he felt a mass in his child's stomach. 
And that can be a lot of things mm -hmm. and a lot of bad things. And the most common one in a, in a young child feeling a bump is like actually just poop, which is not a big deal. But when we felt it, it was really big. I mean, it was like four by two centimeters. It was like a big, large, I could put my hand around it. And I was really worried that it was gonna be like cancer. And the dad is a doctor and like sort of like my wife, like he read me, he knew. And he had also been doing research before he came in. And he, so he came in like in his mind, that's what it was. Yeah. And he looked right at me and he's like, it's cancer. And I'm like, no, I mean, it, it still, we, it could be poop. We gotta, we gotta do an ultrasound. We need to see. And he goes, Scott, it's cancer. And I was like, you're in a bad place. By the way, place. that's an interesting question though. Doctors yeah. don't call each other doctor. They do first name. I, I don't mind if you call me by my first name. And he's a no, friend. I would not so call you doctor. You call me, you should call me doctor here the whole time. <laughs> I would. No, yeah, I would. Uh, that's exactly. is, I'm sorry to My wife calls just, me doctor. This is yeah, exactly. really actually riveting, man. Yeah. Continue. <laughs> No, 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 like, no, 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 it is, man. No, so, like, so, so he's a doctor. So he's a doctor. He's, he's done the what research. What kind of doctor is he? He's an orthopedist. All right. So he, so he came in thinking that's what it was, and he's asking me flat out, "Is this what I'm thinking?" Usually, in these type of visits, you're you're really not going to say outward like that's what I'm worried about. I'm going to say, "Hey, let's do some imaging. Let's do an ultrasound. It's very likely it could be poop." And then we talk about more serious things down the road when we have more information. You don't want to go right to it. Uh -huh. And I had to say, I mean, he knew. And I said, yeah, that is what I'm worried about. But it could be poop and let's do the ultrasound. But then I had to escalate things because I was really worried. I didn't want to just send them to an imaging center. So I called Cedars and I we got an ultrasound. We sent him to the emergency room so he get an ultrasound right then because if the ultrasound is not you know, does is not conclusive of what's going on. You need a CT scan and you can't do all this stuff outpatient, you know, one place. So now it's like everything's sort of heightened, right? I'm sending you to the emergency room. We're doing imaging. I've already called three doctors, you know, mom is there. I'm explaining things to her and we've sort of taken it to death com five in the first five minutes when normally it would have been like, it's probably just poop. Let's get the ultrasound. Right. But thankfully it ended up just being poop. Damn. Right, but I see why you think. But it was, it was, it was. I w I was sick to my stomach all day. I couldn't focus. My partners and the other doctors in the practice, they were like, "It's okay," because like he's a you know he's a friend, and and I'm I'm texting him. It's gonna be okay, and that's all I'm thinking about all day. And then even after we found out it was just poop, like I've been talking to him every day. He's like, "I can't, I can't get it out of my head." Like think about it as a parent, like yeah. that day thinking your child may have something that could kill them, you can't, you just don't get over that. And then I just, I just read it like, did I do it right? It's just so hard. Well, I think you were put under a pressure that you normally aren't put under because you're normally not dealing with another doctor yeah. on the other side of the table. Uh, the peer pressures, if you peer pressured by from another doctor. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that, that could happen. But to your defense, I, I, I'm gonna make a state, I have to make a statement and a question. When Serafina was going through her episode, yeah. I think you handled that extremely well because I'm always looking at him going, this guy telling me, is he masking what he really thinks or is he, you know, because it, it's a tap dance, right? As a doctor, you don't want to like go into worry mode, but then you also have to kind of share the concern with the parent, right? And I was on the road and I was like, hey, you know, like, what, what is it? He's like, you, you, need, you need to come home. You know, and then once he said that, I, I could, the, the tone was, this could be a little bit more serious than what's anticipated. And I thought you handed it beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Secondly, cancer in general. Yeah. These people go in and they go, oh, I, I'm, I got stage four cancer, right? Is, is cancer something that like presents itself where you would know ahead of time that there was something wrong are people avoiding the the uh symptoms that they're having you yeah, know i'm like, doing the pete and sebastian show by the way no 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 this is this is the beauty of the show though this is the beauty of the show yeah there's cheese and salami at the table. <laughs> but i don't think there's any other comedy show that dips into cancer <laughs> quite this way no <laughs> so does cancer come cheering with a <laughs> tuba <laughs> I just hear like oh. I had stage four can I had stage four cancer, but then I'm like, 
oh, like, what, what the, like, didn't you like, were your were your eyes bleeding for eight months, and you just said, nah, it's like I'm crying, or like, what's yeah, the? But you I, know, I, oh, I know how often have you been to the doctor? My kid would put out its Marlboro and go to bed at eight o'clock <laughs> every night, so I have no <laughs> idea where his kids it came from. Are you trying to make this funny because you thought it was like serious? Yes, <laughs> absolutely, bro. I mean, Jesus Christ, it's like my soul might. Michael Keaton, you ever see Michael Keaton do the movie Clean and Sober where he plays a uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, you're a comedian. What are you doing right now? It was like two worlds colliding. So I was just trying to answer you. Okay, just, just answer the question yeah. and then we'll go on to yeah, what yeah. you wanted to talk about. I was just talking about everything. <laughs> I'm into this. I'm into this. All right. I'm going to make him cough on this episode. Well, so what did yeah, it tell? So... What did it tell? Did, you, did you pick up on No, no, I, I don't know. I don't, what, like, uh, a testicle thing? Oh, see there. Exactly. What's it, what's it tell? Tell sons of what? Is that what you're saying? Like, are there any signs to look for? Yes. No, no, no. I mean, because adults usually put things off, right? I mean, how many times do you guys go to the doctor? My, I, I probably wouldn't go to the doctor if my wife didn't make the appointment for me. Right. So I think adults in general put things off. We have a lump in this, like, whatever. It'll probably go away in a couple months. And by the time we get things checked, often that's when it progresses. And kids, because we're seeing them so regularly, and as a parent, your kid complains, you usually get it checked out. We pick up things earlier. And to add on a positive note, Thankfully, most childhood cancers, I mean, like 90 plus percent are curable now. Uh -huh. It's amazing what we can do with early detection and treatments in the last oh, So it's just make sure you got to so, go. Like, that's it. You just and go that, to your doctor. And that's such a perfect answer. And he, I know you're a great doctor. I really do. I bust your balls about the pediatrician aspect. But can, what if he did say to you, uh, you know, if you, if you notice your kid itching the right toe once in a while, you'd go nuts. Every time your kid bent down to pick up a ball or something, you're, what are you grabbing your toe? Oh. You're going to detect it before in yourself before it happens because you text constantly. He notices a hair comes out of his ear and he's like, what do you think that is? Oh, <laughs> it's a hair out of your ear. Brain having a friend to be able to do that with. <laughs> yeah, exactly. no. He doesn't text you that stuff? Full blown pictures. What? I mean, <laughs> if, if I ever get hacked, guess who's going down? It ain't me. Oh, this guy God. right here. Hey, what's I this? Yeah. I should have married a doctor. Wouldn't that be great? I don't you're think just it like would be. literally in the be, shower, you go like that, baby, left shoulder on the knee right here. Uh, it'd be every time, right? Every time, because you got, I'm looking at your eye right now, and there's like a, there's a, like a blood vessel that popped. Did you see it? Did no, you notice but, it? No. no. Did you notice it? <laughs> yeah. No, no yeah, I wasn't looking at no, 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 There's like a little, there's a squiggly blood coming out of your eye. Right, right. right? That's, that's what happens when you, you sewer drink. drink. <laughs> you no, sewer no, no, no. <laughs> If I saw that in my eye, yeah. I'd be concerned. Oh, wow. Right? That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. That's a level. That's a crazy level. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I'm like, I'm constantly thinking I I'm passing away. You know that. I love it. All right. But, so, what, yeah. what did you well, want to ask? Well, I, I, one question I had mm -hmm. to ask, I always wanted to ask of a doctor, like, I've seen these movies and the TV shows. We've all seen them, right? Where the doctor lives in some quaint little small town mm -hmm. with a white picket fence. Yeah. And everyone calls him Doc. Yeah. And he knows everybody. And he ain't. The richest man in the world but he's living comfortably and he's got the beautiful porch where he sips the lemonade does that does that ever had any appeal to you you know so when i finished school do you remember was it called was that show northern exposure mm -hmm. yes that show? yes it was the same thing it was a doctor out in was he alaska yeah he's like the cool guy Drop coming in and michael j fox that movie doc Hollywood, oh yeah, doc right? Hollywood. yeah so i thought and it, when i finished med school that to pay because they often do that to pay back your loans like you have to go to a remote area and serve, sort of like military. But in this case, like you go to places that are underserved for doctors. Is that what that and they'll pay premise back of that loans. show was? Did he have to do that? that? I don't know if he had to, but that's the idea. And I thought about that. Like I had this vision, like I'd be wearing, right? Like the urban outfitter, you know, jacket and drive a Jeep Wrangler and, and do that. And, and then you coffee like, from free from right, Sally's exactly. every morning. So I opened a practice in Beverly Hills. Yeah. All right. No. And you're probably driving a Mercedes. <laughs> no, a Jeep. No, no, no. <laughs> But all right, yeah. So yeah, all right. Um, it was cool. It, I mean, I did think about it, but you know, it's hard. It's hard. To, you got to think your whole life changes. Your family changes. Your family wants to live in that place too, in the remote area. Yeah, well, I'm tough. saying. I'm I saying. No, and you look know. pink. You know, you, you think the style just, goes with like urban. But I feel uh, like you know, Alaska. like well, that leads to my next question well, because Alaska. you live in a place like this, right? Yeah. So you're gonna go in and you're gonna tell someone the diagnosis of their child, and you've probably had someone say, "We'd like to get a second opinion." Yeah. No. Does that offend you? No, it's never happened. Twenty it's never years. Happened. Never. <laughs> would, would that offend you if you're a doctor? I feel like the second, second opinion. opinion. I go, go ahead and get your second opinion. And when, when you go get it, you can also go fuck the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Collect your records on the way out. <laughs> you? 
<laughs> I feel like second opinion in the comedy world is going, yeah, we're going to watch you, but I want to watch somebody else to see how funny you really are, right? right? Yeah, yeah. So the, the second opinion to me, I would get offended because I feel like the, the, the patient doesn't trust my professionalism and my education on whether or not that the, this diagnosis is right. Yeah. But on the other flip side, I get it from from the from the guest or the client point of point of view. No. Yeah, I, I don't mind it as much. I agree with you. In in kids, it doesn't happen as much as you think because you have such a strong. You know, pediatrics is all about relationships, right? So you have a relationship with the family. They're coming to you because it is a, it's it's a personality match, but it's also like a philosophical match. You agree on the same things. Where second opinions usually come in is when you're philosophically opposed on something, and then. It's not really a second opinion. It's just you shouldn't come here because we don't agree on it. For example, like you want a second opinion because you don't want to vaccinate your child. Right, right. And another doctor is going to tell you that vaccines hurt your child. So don't vaccinate. Right. Well, that's just a difference in opinion. And if that's what you choose, great, go choose that. But then choose that over there. That's not going to work over here. So I think it's more on philosophical, not like I do something and they're like, I don't know that this is right. I need another blood test over here. Okay. Yeah. Now, do you, and I know you say this wouldn't necessarily happen so much with you, but do you think like, if not you, has it ever happened where a doctor has gotten asked for a second opinion? Someone yeah. does. And then the doctor who got this second opinion <clears throat> calls the first doctor and goes, listen, they asked for a second opinion. I don't know if you missed this, but I'm about to tell them blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't want to throw you under the bus, yeah. but what the fuck? Yeah. Th is there that relationship? Like that hasn't happened where they've called, um, Usually, again, you don't find out when they go for the second opinion. It's more like they're just switching doc. To your point, they're just switching doctors. And that, all right, then have yeah, you? And but, then I'm never asking the name, but do you have like a doctor in town where you're like, when people go, oh, "I just came from so and so," in your head, you're like, "Oh, I can't believe your kid's still alive." <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it's more. No, but it's more like I totally disagree with all the things that they're saying. Yeah, they, then he yeah. sucks, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, and and we get calls about doing second opinions and I actually don't take those patients. You don't take second opinions? I don't Someone take second opinions. To. I know, I don't because one, I want a relationship with a patient. Pediatrics is all about relationships. I want that long relationship. I don't want the wham, bam, one time, check your kid out, disagree or agree with somebody else and you're out of here. Oh, I don't want to be the so one who just gives you what you want to hear. Yeah, and then second opinions usually come, like I said, with some sort of baggage of like, it's just more of a disagreement in what you believe. that They're just, they're looking for an answer to disagree with what somebody else told them. Yeah. Not necessarily right. that that person right. was wrong yeah. in that so case. Do you ever have so I'm that? like, I don't want to be involved. Well, in with that, have you ever had like a family where you're the, you're the doctor for one child, but not another one? It's a good God, question. My, my, one of our doctors in the practice has that right now. What's like, that about? <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and that's it. No, but that's the crazy thing. They disagree. They want to do some other things. So maybe like, more homeopathic, natural things yeah. for one child. So they're seeing that type of doctor, fine. Right, right. But their other one doesn't need those things. So they're staying with us for that other, which is interesting yeah. that you would See, now, subdivide. This, this is philosophy stuff more than, than, than yeah. scientific, what you're talking about. And what's really interesting here, I have a 10 year old daughter. Mm -hmm. Sebastian's daughter is a few years younger, but like, so now I'm starting to, I mean, my wife read about like regular milk, which we don't give our daughter, has stuff in it that can make your breasts grow quicker, right? And puberty, what do you mean though? Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. see, he no. wouldn't be my doctor. No, he would. No, he wouldn't because we only go organic milk. No, I'm not saying you can't go organic milk. I'm just saying, I don't necessarily believe that, like drinking soy milk, for example, the concern was like phytoestrogen. So estrogen hormones in the milk can cause you to have puberty early or breast development. That hasn't, that cause and effect hasn't happened. If you still, if you want organic, I've, I, we drank organic as well. I have no problem with that. I'm just saying the reasoning behind it, I don't necessarily agree with. Okay. Yeah. All right. What are you saying? No, I'm just saying like, whatever, where are you getting the information about the milk? Well, I'm getting that information from, from word, the, the goal? The word of mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Word, word of mouth. <laughs> yeah. Word, word of mouth. Like, I'd rather get it from the mouth from of the doctor. <laughs> Chat GPT. Please, no. please tell me well, what my, milk no, my, sister, my child breath. My sister said, you know, this, the, sometimes the good hormones, the stuff they put in the cows to make them grow or whatever, mm -hmm. gets into the milk. Yeah. And, uh, That's make, understandable. Okay. Yeah. And are, are you blowing me off? Or you... <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that rationale is understandable. I don't know. There's a, it's like a strong okay. causation. But yeah, we, I agree with you. I, I don't want milk with a ton of hormones and other things, too. I would choose organic over well, not. Uh, I agree you, with you. What's your take on this, then? Because and I really want to talk to you about this. 
there's a documentary one of our cast listeners sent my way and i actually watched it it's on netflix and it's called game changer and it's all about plant-based food uh -huh. okay and you know me throwing out my back and all three is that is that the one that schwarzenegger's in or is that the other yes, one yes watch that really good now in this thing they're talking about the benefits of eating yeah. and there's so many aspects to this thing like first of all there's the idea of that animals themselves are putting and polluting this country with 50 percent more waste than human waste and with was like some ungodly amount of percentage of our water supply is going to feeding these animals keeping them alive just so we can eat them mm -hmm. whereas if we just got well we need our protein we save from meat and they're like what do you think the animal's eating it's eating plants that giving it the protein like these get, huge strong oxen yeah you know yeah. this the world's biggest strongest man was a eating. plant is a plant eater he doesn't even eat meat you don't need to eat the meat eat the thing the meat's eaten you know mm -hmm. and 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 how much <clears throat> you know instantly the forest would grow back like so much destruction in this world is to create the, the listen we're doing a prosciutto show here and i'm <laughs> fucking talking. I, I don't i don't know when i eat this it doesn't taste like lettuce right but that's because you grew up on that. But if your daughter only ate flies dipped in molasses and never had meat, she wouldn't know how delicious it is. She'd be holding up a fly in molasses going, how could anyone not love the fly? Like, like we have to, that's, that's, I, I bro, I know I'm ahead of my time here, what I'm saying. So wait, you watch that. Did I'll you that change either. your diet? It's, it's too inconvenient, bro. I changed my there diet. I'm already like 10 pieces of fucking ham. <laughs> Only because of the convenience level and because I'm, See? I'm, I'm over well, 50. Lazy. I'm too you're late. Done. You're I'm like, too late. I'm you can't change it an old matter. dog. But I told my daughter, <laughs> yeah. my daughter's like, I go, Sadie, you're going to be eating bugs someday. Yeah. Ew, dad, I never will. I'm like, mm, if you don't, your kids are going to love bugs because eventually you're going to take one generation and not even give them the opportunity to have this stuff. And then it won't matter anymore as time goes on. Bro, when, this this stuff will always be here. No, right? the wine will. This won't, bro. And you'll be dead with Did it, you guys. Show you'll your be glass dead with wine? it. They're gonna bury you with the last. God, does he get a You're swizzle be... stick with that? Like, fuck! I'm sitting in a sewage I mean, it's place. <laughs> I'm like sipping. You've like, yeah, oh, it's unbelievable. Is there is there a hole in the hole in the glass? I'm sitting in a sewage plant. <laughs> Dom, we'll come to your place and plug it. I'm sitting in a sewage plant. <laughs> like Gatorade. <laughs> oh, God. You're going to be done by noon. <laughs> all right, everybody. At one time or another, let's be honest, we all need a little financial help. That's why Dave is great. Dave can get you the cash when you need a hand between paychecks and can help you build credit by settling extra cash advances on time. Dave is the banking app that's leveling the financial playing field. When you download Dave, you could get up to $500 in five minutes or less. No credit check, no late fees. It's part of Dave's extra cash account. Advance the money you need with no interest and then settle up later. You got to love Dave. You can even build credit when you settle up on time. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to make their finances easier. So if you're in a pinch, get the help you need by downloading Dave. Download Dave today at dave.com slash the cast. That's Dave, D-A-V-E, just how it sounds, dot com slash the cast. You can get up to $500 in five minutes or less. No credit check. As I said, no late fees. Download the Dave app now or go to dave.com slash the cast. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Eligibility criteria and instant transfer fees do apply. Banking services provided by Evolve, member FDIC. Bro, you see that pursuit over there? You're going to be why. buried with the last one it's right there. So, I'm saying, this is for no. new. so on the anyway, the last one said the plant-based. They took these athletes, right? And they had them eat whatever meat they normally eat at night. And then they took their blood, uh, their pee. And then they also put a ring around their penis to measure their heart arms because a man gets a heart on when he sleeps. And the next night, they had to eat plant-based food that tasted just like their meat. They told them it was plant. They didn't try to trick them. Then they put, had them pee in a tube. And then they showed us the next day, the tea from the plant-based night, clear. You could read a newspaper through the fucking test tube. The pee from the night they had the meat, cloudy, gross, right? And the guy's going, that's all in your body. They looked at the hot on thing. The night they ate the plant food, oh, God, flagpole all night. The meat, 
Just like a dangling, so that, wasn't belly, com- belly. that wasn't compelling enough for you to switch to plant based. <laughs> well, bro, where am I going like, to get this? It's, over it's it not that matter. I wouldn't switch. I then I woke up the next day and I'm like, what am I doing? I called my sister. I'm like, what the fuck? Did you watch this? What are we doing? And then I'm. It just I, wasn't on Red Tube. <laughs> yeah, I, don't rem- I don't remember no, that rings around the penis bigger. part, but no, no, I, it was hard. I, I watch it. And it's and very compelling. It came on at the end, yeah. and he's like, "I don't eat meat anymore." No, it was very compelling, well, and I actually changed my went- diet for months and stopped meat. But to your point, it did became- you feel better and more? In- yeah, everybody kept asking that. I think I did, but then you just wonder, like, did I have more energy? Yeah, I wasn't eating crap at all. But then it became, to your point, inconvenient. Like when I went out with friends, I wanted to have a steak every once in a while. I want to do it. So I think those things are really compelling and there's a lot of good stuff. You got to take everything with a grain of salt. It's not all, you know, like gospel. But I think it, because, right, there are animals that eat plants but that are muscular and not like that. It's but your no, it's response. very interesting. Don't you think? I think it's probably if better every, for you. If everything you're saying is that is that's better for you yeah. and you yeah. did it and it probably is, isn't it your responsibility and every doctor's responsibility yeah. in this country to collectively get together and say, we got to fucking stop doing this instead of just going, yeah, no, it's probably better for me. You want some prosciutto? You want some prosciutto? I just want to swallow my trident. Which you wouldn't have to do that, would you? Oh, bro, oh, it's, like, it's, like, it's, like, it's, it's almost like a sin that you're have an orange trident and prosciutto at the same time. Bro, I mean, can geez. we get a close up on it? Says sewage stump. Oh, does it really matter that I pull the piece of gum out of my mouth before I put the bridge? But you got the taste of shit in your mouth. Yeah, but, um, but it's funny that you do that. I, I see you buttoned up one more. No, no, I'm feeling really good. Um, I'm feeling really good. This has been a fun show. The next show with Bobby is going to be me and you snoring <laughs> while, while he's sipping wine. But this show, he don't drink. He don't do nothing. Right? Oh. He's sober. I can't wait until you do a doctor series. You have like a proctologist on. You're gonna just do it all. But what's your take on a um, uh, on puberty? Is that like it a, happens? I know, but <laughs> it's a fascinating well, thing, isn't it? Well, yeah. What's the question? Just like you know, you know, what's that about? Man? What the <laughs> fuck? You know, I mean, like, I mean, like, so is is puberty happening earlier than it has in in, in the past? It is. Yeah, because in the milk. In the wow. cows, the hormones. Yeah, I mean, we, oh my we, God, yeah. was he here for the first fifteen? <laughs> no, minutes no, no, no. I, I, we, we don't I'm know. Not, I'm, I'm it's, looking it's, for, it's, the, for the medical. No, no, not I mean, the guy. Who, it's probably who, a combination of a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, you don't want from the three wine guy from Fredonia State. <laughs> By the way, where like, you go to no, college? Right on the other. Where did you go to college? I didn't go to college. Online. <laughs> online. 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 I believe degree. it. Yeah, I exactly. believe it. So I didn't know the variety did matter. Yeah, exactly. You can get anything right now. Oh. Oh, Cornell, God. have you heard of Cornell? Oh my God, that's, that's number one your... place I want my daughter to that's, go. That's God, in your neck I of the woods. Anything. What? That's in your neck of the woods. They, it's on uh, most boards. It's the third best college in the country, behind Harvard and uh, oh, really? Stanford. But really, no, I, I don't know. How, I wouldn't get into college nowadays. You see what the kids are going through to get into college? I thought, you... I thought that college was easier to get into nowadays. No? Oh, dude, you, you can get your kid. All you got to do is build a gymnasium. <laughs> get, get, yeah. yeah, you better hope your kid's funny. You're going to be playing. <laughs> you, know, the, the, you know, she's going to yeah. be, oh, you have And uh, I'd like to introduce my daughter. And at the same yeah, time, yeah. the new man of Scalco Gymnasium seats 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> they don't correlate, though. She got it on her own merit. <laughs> well, how do you know Cornell? How do you know Cornell? I mean, like, why, why, why is that on the radar for you? Well, it's an Ivy League school. It's also four hours from where I live, and I have three kids that live down the block from me, brothers and two sisters that all went there. It's a great school, man. Yeah. So, so your experience in Cornell, mm-hmm. uh, it, it is an Ivy League school, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh my God! What are you gonna fact check everything I say? This show, guys. I don't believe. I don't believe fucking word is coming out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you just didn't believe I'm going to do an Ivy League school. It's nothing to do with you. You saying oh, right, that it is. Right, right, He's right. like, no, really. Right. Show me. Show me the diploma. Uh, <laughs> and th- th- this really might be showing my ignorance in the. Stop uh, saying stuff like that. I mean, no. With the college, but... Why do they call it Ivy League? Why do they, bro? No one Because they're says. old. All the Why? Ivy on it. That's probably a not very woke word, <laughs> right? What? The old or the Ivy? Uh, what? What? Oh, oh, the, oh, Ivy, because it has a, oh, that's a stretch. Wait, wait, hold on, wait, I need to know where your brain went on the uh, woke word. What, what yeah, did you where, think? What yeah. did you think I, I said? Agree. Oh, no, Ivy, Ivy. 
You thought it was Ivory, Ivory well, League? Is that another edit? Wait, hold on. You guys, is, you wait, guys are going to be busy. That's, that's, not, not, a, that's busy. not an edit. That's the greatest meme oh, ever. Says the guy who wants my show. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. We, can, we can still I'm use it. Yeah. Let's get that show. Wait, yeah, we, so, can, we can, we can still Smash, it's only daddy knocked it out. There's nothing wait, else to do. No, we can still keep the S in your name. <laughs> Sebastian and Scott. <laughs> He's already got it figured yeah, out. I know. It's like I don't like, I don't like, like the, the font. It's like the new girl trying that. to figure exactly. out how, to, how we can change the husband's tattoo to the ex-wife's name <laughs> without doing a full skin grab. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, you thought it was Ivory League? No, I, I, no, I knew it was. And no, I knew it wasn't. Uh, I don't think so, bro. I think you wanted your kid to go to an Ivory League school. Wow. With the new Supreme Court decision, he felt that it was going to happen. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, guys, miracle brand time. Did you know that traditional bed sheets can harbor more bacteria than a toilet seat? Unbelievable. Hard to believe, but totally true. It can lead to acne, allergies, and stuffy noses. And it's just gross. Come on. Miracle Made Off has a whole line of self cleaning, eco friendly bedding such as sheets, pillowcases, and comforters that prevent 99% of bacteria and require three times less laundry. Are you kidding me? Using silver-infused fabrics inspired by NASA. That's right, the same NASA that's going to be taking us to Mars. Miracle-made sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long so you can get a better sleep every night. I'm using Miracle-made sheets, man. They are so comfortable, and what I love most about them is when you finally do wash them a few times, they get even softer, if that's possible. I don't even know if you could use this, but I feel like I'm laying on a baby's ass. Stop sleeping on bacteria. Bacteria can clog your pores, causing breakouts and acne. Sleep clean with Miracle. So go to TryMiracle.com slash the cast to try Miracle Made Sheets today. You got the holidays coming up, man. Knock out gifts all ready for your parents. Find out the size of their bed and get these Miracle Made Sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or, like I said, a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo, the cast at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Oh, sheets and three towels. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a free full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made or friends or family members. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash the cast and use the code the cast to claim your free three piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash the cast to treat yourself. Do it. Thank you, Miracle Made, for sponsoring this episode. Did you take the SATs? Yeah. Do you remember what you got? No. Did yeah, you take the exactly. ACTs? No, I didn't take the ACTs. You have no idea what you got in your I, I know exactly what I got. Thirteen hundred. you get? Yeah, 13, like 20 or 13, 40. What, what's the not like you a, get? 1,600. 1,600, right? Yeah. I wasn't good on the, I, I was really bad at the English portion, which is crazy because I was an English major. Really? Yeah. I know what I got. Do you what know what you, you got? got? I didn't take the SATs. I took the ACTs. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> what did you get? No, well, ACTs <laughs> West Coast, though. Yeah. Well, you took, why did you take the ACTs? Midwest. Oh. What'd you get? Uh, I got an 18. Okay. I think what's AC- it out of like 36? 36. I, yeah. I think everybody takes the SATs. They probably just said to you, just. Yeah. Well, what do you know? I, th- I think I took the ACT and they said, don't even bother with the SAT because oh, yeah. if you got an 18, there's no way you're. I took the prep course for the second go around. I got a 17. So. The prep hurt you. The prep hurt me. You did worse the second time? I did the worst. The second time around, right? Your street right? knowledge wow. was better. Okay. <laughs> wow, you lost interest and enthusiasm <laughs> from test one to test two. Right. Oh my so gosh. that's why I'm here. People in go a fucking sewage people, tank. People go. You got talking on a You got to focus and lock in when you take the test the next time, and you go. I'm not going to do either one of those things. I'm going to tap out even more. Would you get an SAT? Come on, he's a doctor though. He's 13. But right? even with that number, I wouldn't you get into college. Nine forty A. Okay, so is that is that decent? Nine forty. Oh my god, bro! Nine forty is decent. Nine forty is embarrassing. Look up an SAT. What the average score is? You gotta break, you gotta break think, a thousand. I think eight hundred for writing the name. Isn't that what they say? I, I thought it was. No, I, I took was, them twice, and the first time I took them. I think I got like 920. The second time I got 940, but so I didn't do that much better. But I remember the second time I had to take them, all I was thinking is, 
fucking hey, these things are so long. I take this stupid thing again. You know? But it's look, like, it doesn't matter because look at I mean, look how well you're doing. 1089, you're taking 1050 over here. So we take a like a 10, 10, 10. So you're below average. Right? I'm below oh, I'm below average. What'd a you get? ACT average? Blue mm -hmm. ACT average? Well, Lindsay, you, did you get a 1050? I think it's 22 on the ACT if, I, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. So I would have been better off scoring less and doing comedy. Do you remember, though, like, I never had this. Like, I see in movies and stuff, and maybe you had this. These kids, you know, got the letter from Cornell, and the family gathers around, and they fucking get over it. Like, You're in. It's so fucked. I never had any of that. Like, did, did, did you I ever? Know. I think that's, like, the Instagram but every generation. I applied to was like, yeah, you get the money? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, fuck, you get the money, you can go. <laughs> <laughs> No, our... <laughs> uh, who do we accept? Anybody with a Visa card? That's what we fucking. You got. Think. You only got envelopes with credit card authorizations, and did you're you... like, well, whatever they ran worked. I'm like, oh, did you do like... that? Did your dad get to get the envelope open up? Oh, no, man. ours was like, oh fuck, you're like, <laughs> again, <laughs> another <laughs> denial. Yeah. I know, like. I should have applied to Harvard just to get the, the letter. <laughs> yeah. Just to frame it. And by the way, the schools, Ivy League schools, give different letters, uh, the, the rejection letters based on, like, if I applied with a 940 yeah. and didn't get in, <laughs> do I get a different reject? Like, does my say, are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? It's one of those cards that sings to you. Then it goes, if you got any <laughs> like, brothers or sisters and they get a 940, tell them not to fucking send an application. <laughs> You're like, thank you for your application fee. We ran your credit card. Oh, oh my geez. God. Well, here, talking about college admissions, you know, and I don't know if you're going through this, but. How old are your kids? 15 and 13. Okay. They're not yet. So, Next year, so they're kind of on the looking. cusp of it's going crazy. to college. Yeah. Do these colleges nowadays look at the involvement of the parents, the charitable, whatever you're giving to charity and what? <laughs> <laughs> he's, already, he's already setting up. Like, Who do I got to bring to get my kid in the hall? <laughs> Maniscalco Library of Italian Studies. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Now, by the way, you didn't tell Sebastian. If your wife, you said, went to Cornell too. Yeah, we met them. Yeah, their kids, his kids, just have to do relatively well, and they can go to Cornell. It's like totally. No, we don't donate enough. No, but if, if you if you graduate from a college, comes, your kid can help. can get into that college a little you easier. Think? Yeah, well, I feel bad yeah. for my daughter because you know I mean, you're gonna go to Fredonia. I mean, I'm hoping he's gonna donate for us. Yeah, no, no, I'll I'll, I'll donate the the next water polo. Uh, facility and the whole the whole kit and caboodle will go there there you go man there now, you go do you think your kids at this age are smarter than you were at this age <laughs> yeah you, jesus christ <laughs> but they're book, book not street you all right yeah well, now, you, want, you want the heimlich listen we're not going to make it past one o'clock no i'm good <laughs> thank you Liz. Do you got you have a plunger thank you, thank you. so book smart i are. think kids are book smart but i think street smarts we were much all of us were our generation was smarter do you think do you think sadie's smarter than you at 10 than you were at 10. you're smarter me now <laughs> 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 yeah but, but yeah definitely smarter me at 10 but no but you bring up a great point yeah. but like yeah but also probably you could probably get her in the back of a van quicker than you could get me into a, <laughs> a back of a van at 10 years old you know that, I'm more of a, I will say this, uh, what? Street smart, no, street smart. Street smart. And I will say this too, uh, less brave, man. Kids today are way less brave than we were, man. I mean, crazy. They like can't a, walk across the street. Like a, a bee will send a kid indoors, you know? Like, I don't know, man. I, I find that my kids. I think we had more grit. Like we, I shouldn't say just, this though because then she we was back around, the ball behind Ivan. Yeah. I wouldn't do that either. So it's yeah. a different kind of bravery. No, yeah, it's just different, right? It's different. But do you we think your kids are smarter than you? Like, I mean, I think Serafina definitely. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think Cruz was more creative. I think Serafina is more uh, definitely more in the book smart. We haven't we haven't. I don't know. Six and four is a little tough to tell what what's going on. But uh, I, I wasn't. Listen, I was as we. It, um, yeah, I mean, he's still wearing a diaper. Yeah, I, I judge, you're like me, though. I judge intelligence by wealth. 
<laughs> then I'm losing. Is there any other way to judge it? Someone said, "Are you smart?" I, if I was rich, I'd love to no, be. I I think, I'd I, say smart enough no, to know bro, for rich. I don't think if that, I was. But I don't not, think that's but, true. You know, I know, right? I know it's not. There's a not, lot of dumb but, people that are wealthy. Yeah, but I know people. I know. I, I know guys I grew up with that. I don't want to name names. They're, really weren't, they're not smart. They weren't smart guys, but they knew what they were good at. Like, and I knew a couple of guys that got into blue collar mm -hmm. jobs, but they ended up running their business and ran them to the point where they're very rich and very wealthy and very happy. And it was almost like they were smart enough to know that they weren't very smart. Yeah. So let me keep all this real simple, but work real hard and be and and and, and lean in hard into what I can do well, and you know. So that's no, I, I I agree with that definitely. Be and before we leave here, I, God, we need I'm having a good time with you, bro. We, we, we need. Oh, we talk. didn't even hit puberty. It's crazy. <laughs> we need to talk, and, and maybe you didn't, guys. I know you did. I know. <laughs> you're like you're all around, all around here. <laughs> you did. Still working on it. I want to talk about what we were talking about last night about him. Owen picked up. West is it West Nile? West Nile, yeah. Oh, West Nile, yeah. No, that's from a, from a mosquito, right? Right. And David and Goliath, I almost went down. Doctor got stung by a mosquito, and I and I think um, this has a confirm happened in my backyard, right? I might have. This is amazing. Been confirmed. This is amazing too. <laughs> Because when I said before, I feel like children aren't as brave. My daughter, the kids run inside from a beast thing. Yeah. I looked at, he didn't laugh. I'm like, the fuck? That was funny. <laughs> yeah, he PTSD, almost died now you West know why. Exactly. Two weeks ago, he was like, went yeah. down by the small city yeah. near the map. I, he, he, he poked his head in here to look for him. He yeah. opened yeah. before he even came no, in no. here. Now, crazy. Take us through your experience. Because I, I, I don't know a lot of people that, that had West Nile disease, right? No. Nobody's had West Nile. Right. No, this yeah. is like so. So this guy, unbelievable. It's stung by a mosquito. By the way, do you know where the mosquito sting? Like, no, I don't know because, uh, you know, there are people who like every time they're outside, they got bug bites all over. Like, I'm not one of those people. I don't get bit. I don't wear insect repellent. So I don't even know. But it was the thing was it was right in the middle of COVID. So every time everybody got sick, you thought you were, you had COVID, right? You had fever. And we'd come to your house. Before we go any further, that was so funny. I want to point out when you go, we got to get into what we were talking about last night. When I told you that Dom got West Nile. I'm done. But <laughs> I'm going to this is Dom. Scott, that Scott. Hey, how do you like my cheese store? This place is great, isn't it? Scott got the West Nile, right? Wait, hold on. But then you go, you go, and it might have been in my house. And Scott goes, oh, it was definitely your house. That's a lawsuit That's that you're just yeah. finding out. That's about the only reason we're still friends. Oh, because he's afraid if um, we break up this relationship. Right. Yeah. No, but so this is a fascinating story. One more wine because it's unbelievable. So get back to <laughs> I it, bro. Can't tell when you're. No, one hundred percent, dude. West Nile. This is like if I was at a party and you had it, I'd be like, hold on, Jack. Jack. <laughs> he almost died from West Nile. Come over here. He's telling us about it. But you do that with Lana. No, no. Fucking no. guy almost died from mosquito. Gather no. round, bro. Bro, I, and before you tell the story, yeah, I would lead with this story. If I had West Nile, God forbid, I would lead with this story at a party because everybody's going around. Oh, what are you doing? Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, just uh, counting and this is that. Yeah. How about you? I had West Nile in 2021. <laughs> what? <laughs> that, right, right away. I'm stuck. Kimmel told this story on Howard Stern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember that? Oh, he had yeah. West Nile? No, he told it about me. <laughs> he did? Kimmel went on Stern. How does he know about you? He knows. And then, <laughs> oh, I get it. And then, and then he literally is like, my pediatrician, and he told my whole story oh my. to Stern. That was the segment on Stern. Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. And now you're getting bro, first. Yeah. You wouldn't leave with it. That would be like Bonnie Raitt opening up with Angel of Montgomery. Once she sings that, you tell you the West Nile story. Thanks for end? coming to the party. You and then we just there. drop the mic. No, and, and then I don't talk to anybody the rest of the night. They come to you. Yeah, for details. I get to West Nile. So it was around 4th of July. I had, we come for his birthday. Then I got a fever uh, like a week later and I'm in bed and I fever for a couple days and I was so worried that it was COVID and that I infected like friends and family. I'd seen my brother and his, and his baby that I went and I got COVID tested and it was negative. And then I got COVID tested again. It was negative. I'm like, at least not COVID. But like a typical guy, I'm like, I'm just going to stay in bed. I, I got a, a virus. So I stayed in bed. I fever three days, five days. I don't get out of bed. 
where Aaron, my wife comes to me and says, I, we got it. Are you really that sick? Cause she says like, if I have a cold, I'm like faking it. Right. It's a typical guy. We're always so sick. So she thought maybe I wasn't as sick. I'm like, no, I really feel like I'm dying. She said, well, why don't you go to the hospital? I'm not going to go to the hospital. I'm going to go to a buddy of mine who has a pediatric urgent care. So talk about pediatricians not knowing anything from adults. So I call him. I go, I need to come to your, your place. Just do a chest x-ray, do some blood work. And I get there. And while I'm getting the chest x-ray, I collapse. And he puts me on a gurney and he's trying to put an IV in. And he's used to like little tiny kids. And he's trying to get an IV and he's calling the hospital and my partner comes to get me there. Now, could he get in trouble if they go, what the fuck was this guy doing no, on a gurney? No, 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 I mean, I mean, I mean like, but he's trying, he's trying right? all these you things, rightfully so, get an IV, mm -hmm. fix all the stuff. My partner comes to take me to the hospital and while we're driving there, I said, I can't, the reason I went there is I woke up that morning and I couldn't see, everything was double. And I called Aaron, I said, I, I can't see, something's really wrong. And she goes, yeah, you need to go check it out. So we're driving there and everything is double. And we get to the hospital and Cedars and I go to the emergency room and they do a CT scan to make sure I don't have like a mass and brain, nothing. They do a lumbar puncture to make sure I don't have meningitis. And then they admit me and I'm there for a week and I'm still having fevers and I am a out week? of it. I am out of it. You know, I didn't talk to anybody. I'd wake up, go to sleep, wake up, go to sleep. That's it. Totally out of it. They're doing every blood test. They invented quote unquote, a blood test to see if I had COVID in the, in my CSF, like meningitis, COVID meningitis, because they were so convinced everybody had COVID. Yeah. The whole hospital was full of COVID and they had no clue what I had. And then finally, the only test that was left, because it takes, it takes like a week, was West Nile. And it ended up, I had West Nile meningitis and I had so much brain swelling, it was, it, it was causing my vision to be double because it was causing the nerve that goes to the eyes yeah. to be like squished. Wow. And holy cow. Oh, thing, I was the third case in all of California. I was the most severe, most so, like I probably read about you when I go third case of over 10% over mortality rate die. The majority, if you survive, never get back function, like keep the messed up eyes, keep the whatever. So that's all I'm thinking about One, I'm dying. I told my wife and I had a discussion while I was in the hospital and one of my lucid periods, because I really felt I was going to die. It was just that feeling. And then finally went home and then, um, slept for another two weeks. So, so bad. Couldn't walk upstairs for two weeks. That's how much exactly. I was out of it. Yeah. I lost like 25 pounds. What's, what's totally out. what are they giving you to come back from no, this? No, it's because it's a virus. There's nothing you can do. You either get better or you don't get better. Oh, shit. So, so. Yeah, you're 100% back. Yeah, 100% back. Oh, but I was out for, I was out for a month. Jesus. A, a month. Couldn't now, do would anything. You, would you, if someone said, we found that mosquito. But kind of murder. I'm, no, <laughs> would you would you love to have that mosquito in a little glass case? Oh, that would be a great touch. Oh, like Jurassic Park. On the Park. mantle. On the mantle. What's that? See that yeah. little fucker. You know what? You know what they me. You know what? You know what they did? <laughs> little motherfucker almost put me down. You know what? But who's down now? Who's down now, bitch? <laughs> the, 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 the city came because of West Nile. The city came. My house as the epicenter and drew a circle and took a truck around the neighborhood and blew insect repellent, like the stuff in the air to kill the mosquitoes because of what's going on. And you come on the cast and go, oh, we got, no, I got nothing this week. What's going on in your end in Fredonia? <laughs> Meanwhile, your pediatrician's house when, 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 when did we talk? We talked like, like, like a, a weekend. I was pretty out of it still. Yeah, so oh, well, that's a crazy, crazy? story. Do you know where the bite was on you? No, he doesn't know where the bite was, but was. what I want to ask you, and I want to confirm because I told him that last night, you can never get West Nile again. I can't get West Nile. It's one of the ones I can't get again. Okay, and if a, if a mosquito with West Nile uh, bites somebody, not necessarily that person gets West Nile, No, most right? people don't get sick, or you get mild symptoms like cold symptoms, so you would never know because you would never test for it. West Nile meningitis, super, super rare. Again, like there's only a handful of cases in the whole state. But could the bug that had bit you that night also bitten Sebastian that same night? Possibly. Could have been. Yeah. Possibly, yeah. I, th I thought when the, when the mosquitoes bite somebody, they die. Is that right? No, no a that's, a, that's a bee, bee sting. sting. Dude. Bee sting. Now, they but die. the timing was they said, this is the time frame. You got it because you know the when it, the symptoms occur. And the only place I had been his house. Well, again, that's the, the Jewish yeah. lawyer you got. Yeah. 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 So but, make sure you print uh, that. Yeah. Okay.
Okay. Let, yeah. No, no, that's it. That's it. We got, we got to not fucking knock this out. Listen, anyway, I'm right, unbelievable. Right. We could sit here all we could. day long, talk about mosquitoes and puberty, but we got to wrap it up. Thanks to Dr. Kona coming on. Thank Dr. you guys Dr. for having me. Really, I really appreciate it. Thank no, you. Awesome. We, we have a podcast Fun. called Daddy versus Doctor that you could catch. Uh, is that okay for him to mention Of course, that? bro. Yeah. Uh, this, this Glad is you're alive. <laughs> It's Pete Sebastian Show. Podcast. Signing off. Thanks for listening. <laughs>